Okay, I have to admit, this video provocatively entitled How to Save 30 Watts or More Just Using Your Chain should probably be entitled How to Lose 30 Watts or More because for the typical cyclist who's not looking after their chain very regularly, basically you're going to lose those 30 watts rather than gain them from a sealed system. I've got here the SRAM RED22. This is an awesome piece of chain technology, but it's equally matched from the other major manufacturers. The outside plates are ramped. Sometimes these chains, by the way, are directional, meaning you've got to put them on the right way around. The little pins are hollow, meaning it saves weight throughout its course. And in the middle there, you've got these little rollers around the pins. And this is the essence of chain technology since 1870, when Henry Reynold invented this system, i.e. the system of the uh, roller chain. The roller chain was invented for industrial applications, but within 10 years it was used in cycling. So let's have a look at these power savings from number one to eight, things that you can do to enhance your drivetrain efficiency. So at number one, number one, definitely out there, saving you about 12 watts is clean your chain. Now, I know you're going to say, duh, that's obvious, but so few cyclists actually clean their chain regularly. Jason Smith of Friction Facts has shown that if you ride with a really dirty mountain bike chain, you're losing 12, 13, 14, 15 watts very, very easily. You're just throwing them away. But if you clean your chain very regularly, you're going to make that saving for virtually no cost. In fact, going from a clean chain to a dirty chain, within two rides, you lose about three watts. Even simple exterior cleaning of your chain is going to save most of those watts straight away. So number one tip, clean your chain. Number two tip, saving about five watts, is to buy a good quality chain. And this has been shown in batch testing. If you compare chain manufacturers products from, you know, relatively cheap chain to a relatively good chain, buying a good quality chain and, you know, a lot of the manufacturers will make their high end chains to good tolerance standards will save you about five watts from a medium or poor quality chain. Next, saving about four watts. Number three on my list is to use a chain of the right length. In other words, don't install the chain with too much tension. Too much tension puts every one of those links under strain. And at about 90 RPM, the drivetrain is undergoing about 40,000 articulations per minute over all those links in the chain. Imagine all those links under slight strain. If you put that system under excessive strain, you'll be losing those watts and you'll also be reducing the life of your chain. So install your chain correctly and also observe any directionality that it has in the system. Number four on my list, saving about three watts then, is cross-chaining. You all know what cross-chaining means. It means putting the chain in the big ring at the front and the big ring on the cassette. Basically what matters is the angle that the chain is deviating to laterally. If the angle is more than 3%, then you're going to be having some losses that could be two or three watts or more. Now, if you're just a casual cyclist, that doesn't matter. But if you're really interested in saving every watt, if every watt matters, try and keep that drivetrain as efficient as possible by keeping that chain going in the right direction. Number five on my list, saving about two watts, is the chain efficiency itself. There's a difference between the same chain from the same manufacturer, and this has been shown in the hour records, for example, by Bradley Wiggins. The sponsors batch tested a huge number of chains and found the exact item, the exact model, not just the, not just the chain specification, but which individual chain performed best. Now, I realize you can't do this at home, but what you can do is buy an 11 speed chain. 11 speed chains are generally made to higher tolerances than 10 speed chains. 10 speed chains has been shown by looking at their, their wear indicator straight out of the box. And about a third of 10 speed chains have a high wear indicator straight out of the box. So 11 speed chains are generally made to a higher specification. Now the great thing is here that 11 speed chains work on 10 and 9 speed systems and that's simply because the inner diameter, that roller width, hasn't really changed through the last few generations of chains. The inner diameter, that inner space where the teeth goes is around about two millimeters. Sure, the outer width of the chain has been compressed down to about five millimeters, 5.5 millimeters from around about eight, nine millimeters in the six and seven speed chains. But what that means is the 11 speed chain will actually fit your 10 and 9 speed system and it's made to good high tolerances so it's worth considering. Also saving two watts and next on my list is chain wear. If you've got excessive chain wear then there's um, excessive play in the chain and you lose one to two watts in that inefficiency. In fact did you know if you hang 100, 120 kilogram weight from a chain then it will stretch around about 0.5 or 1 percent. Well, that's happening all the time on the drivetrain and over time it becomes permanent. Although that chain stretch test, when you take the weight off, the chain returns in a good quality brand new chain. 
over time, the wear indicator is that chains lengthen up to, well, 0.5 to 1% longer than they should be. Then it's time to change the chain. So use a, use a wear indicator, or if you don't have one, change your chain after, let's say, four or 5,000 kilometers of riding, and you'll be always using a more efficient chain. Number seven on my list is so-called deep clean. A deep clean from a manufacturer often means an ultrasonic clean, an ultrasonic path. But you can actually do a deep clean yourself. But deep clean at home means removing the chain from the bike and then putting the chain in a sealed bottle with your degreaser, shaking it vigorously, emptying out that dirty degreaser, and then putting in a new clean degreaser, going through the same process again, maybe up to two more times. You get the chain very, very clean that way. That deep clean will save you one to two watts, all other things considered. By the way, there's really no difference between all the degreasers on the market. In fact, you can use petrol, diesel, or white spirit. It really doesn't make a lot of difference. There's no point spending a lot of money on an expensive degreaser. So we're down to number eight now, eighth on my list. Now I have to admit, eighth is slightly out of sync because this will save you four to five watts. And that's applying the appropriate lubrication or one of these super lubes, super lubes to your chain to make it as, as efficient as possible on top of a, of a clean chain with a good chain line, well installed, correct length. So what is the best chain lube? You probably already looked this up and you probably know what I'm gonna say, but before I say the best, did you know you can use simple engine oil or you can even use olive oil on a chain and it does work. The problem with these oils is they're very viscous and they tend to drip off the chain and they also collect dirt. So it's not the inefficiency that drives you away from those simple products. It's the fact that they cause contamination very, very quickly. No, no, the best products are now based around wax and probably paraffin wax is the number one product. Um, but within that, there are certain additives, super additives that can be added. And to cite friction facts and ceramic speed, the two additives of note are molybdenum disulfide and also Teflon. And if you want to know the ratio, it's about 500 grams of paraffin wax, five grams of Teflon and one gram of molybdenum disulfide. In that combination, once you, once you heat it and apply it to the chain, it becomes very resistant to brushing off. And it goes into all those little links and it becomes a very, very efficient system. You have to operate the chain once so that the outside wax tends to chip off. But once you've done that, the system is very, very efficient. So those are my tips from number one to number eight to save, or shall we say not lose 30 watts out of your drivetrain. I hope that's useful. Have a good ride.